Hello all. In this session, we are going to understand about something called a stored program organization or one human architecture. What it is exactly? What do you mean by stored program organization or one human architecture? When you look at the history of the computers, as you know that the computer system is going to execute just the programs, storing a program is a vital thing. First of all, we need to have a provision to store any program. Let us say you do have a C program, or you do have a Java program, or you do have some program that is needed to be executed. In the initial days of a computer system, let us say in 1940s, the programs were written on some punched cards. There is something called a punched card. A programmer needed to collect a few punched cards on which a pattern of holes are going to be made. Finally, the punched cards are actually stored, the, are actually going to store the programs. That is, in the initial days of computing, we do not have any form of memory. If you want to write a program, first of all, you collect a card, a punched card. A punched card will be in a square shape on which you need to make a pattern of holes. This pattern of holes is going to represent an instruction. If you want to write 100 instructions, you need to collect in and around 100 punched cards. After which, once after the pattern of holes are made, you are ready with your program. And this program must be fed to the computer system. You might have heard that the computer system, the computer system occupies a huge space with no memory at all. The memory what we are using right now is, was not present in the previous days. If you want to execute a program, you just need to collect a few punched cards and thereby making the pattern of holes, you're going to write your program. And after which, once after the program is written, all these punched cards must be fed to the computer system. Finally, you will be able to see the output on the screen. And this output will remain for some time. After that, output also will vanish off. If you want to re-execute your program, again, the procedure will be the same. The written program must be fed to the computer system. The problem in 1940s computer system was there was no form of memory at all. Writing a program on a punched card was the you know, more tedi most uh, difficult task for a programmer. That is, if you are a programmer, you also need to how to make a pattern of holes on a punched card. So that was very difficult in those days. But right after the one human model has been proposed and invented, this program execution paradigm has been become very simple. That is, one human architecture suggested something called memory. That is, a computer system, that is, a CPU, will also have an additional component, something called memory. If you are a programmer, you don't need to collect any punch cards. Rather, you just write your program by using some peripheral devices. Finally, if you want to execute a program, you should be able to store the program in the memory. This is all about either one human architecture or stored program organization. Stored program organization can also be called as a one human architecture. This is how it does go. Once again, the rule of the stored program organization or one human architecture is as the computer system is equipped with an additional component, something which is called memory, a programmer is required to write his program and store his program in the main memory for execution. This is all about one human architecture. What is a program? You know that the program is a set of instructions, right? A program is always a set of instructions. Every time when you execute the instruction, you may require some data operands, that is, let us have a look at the instruction. A program is a set of instructions. When you look at an instruction, this instruction is designed by something called an opcode and one or two operands. There will be operands. That is, if you want to execute the instruction, rather, if you want to design an instruction, you can design the instruction with these two parts. Instruction should contain the opcode part. The opcode 
will specify the operation that is needed to be performed as a result of the execution of this instruction. What kind of an operation this instruction is going to be performed? Is it, this instruction is going to perform? Will be represented by using an opcode. This opcode might be addition or subtraction or whatever. After defining the opcode, we should also find out the operation. Rather, you know, we should also find out the operands on which the operation that is needed to be performed. This is what the instruction is all about, which means that an instruction will have an opcode, which shows the operation. It requires the operands on which the operation is needed to be performed, right? So now, as a program is a collection of instructions, this program is getting stored in the main memory. Again, the program has two parts. One is instruction part. The instruction part will get into the instruction memory. And another one is data part. The data part is uh, the collection of operands that are needed to support your program's instruction. Every time you execute an instruction, it may require one or other data operands. So essentially, you can understand that the memory is being divided into two parts. One is instruction part, and one more is data part. The instruction part is going to hold the instructions of the program. The data part is going to hold the data operands of the program, which are actually needed for execution of the program. So this is all about stored program organization. In the stored program organization, once again, the important and fundamental thing that we need to understand is there has been invented something called a memory. Now, a programmer is needed to write his program and store his program in the memory for execution. A program is a set of instructions. An instruction, when you want to execute, it may require operands. So main memory has been essentially divided into two parts. One is instruction part and a data part. Instruction part is going to hold all the instructions of a program, and the data part is going to hold all the data elements or the data operands of a program. Both are actually fetched every time when an instruction gets executed. So here, look at the register set. This is the CPU. In CPU, we do have you know, three components. One is control unit, one more is uh, ALU, and the third one is a register set. What is the purpose of each and every unit here? We discussed in the initial introduction class. Nevertheless, control unit is going to synchronize the activities. ALU is going to perform arithmetic or logical operations one at a time. This register set is going to provide a storage provision for the concurrently executing instruction. A program is a set of, let us say, 30 instructions. First instruction will be fixed. In order to start with the execution of this 30 instruction program, first instruction will be fixed. When the first instruction is fixed, first instruction may require the data operand. So the data operand will be collected from the data memory. Instruction will get fetched from the instruction memory. Operand will get collected from the data memory. So every time when you execute an instruction, it requires the current instruction and the associated data elements. So all the related elements that are the part of the concurrent instruction that is getting executed will get stored in this register set. So finally, once after the data elements are completely stored, in addition to the instruction, then it is all set for the execution of the concurrent instruction. Then the instruction will get executed. After executing the first instruction, second instruction will get fetched along with its associated data elements. Once after everything is stored in the register set, then ALU is going to perform the execution. So this control unit is going to take care of which data item will be brought into this CPU and which data item will be sent back to the main memory. So we will discuss more about the control unit while we discuss about the control unit. This is all about the one human architecture model. Thank you.